how to size radiators for low temperature central heating and will the radiators that's in the property already be okay. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video we're going to look at an existing heating system or an existing radiator in a bedroom and we're going to see if that will work on low temperature and what the impact will be if you're going to change the boiler even if you were only going to change the boiler down to a lower temperature so will we need to change radiators what we need to change radiators that's what we're going to try and do in this video today so i'm back with michael from the national gas center for excellence and in this video today michael's going to go through um, sizing them on board show you the difference with some calculations and then after michael's done that i'm going to give you some little tips i've got a little um I won't say it's a cheat guide, but I think it'll be it work out easier for you. What I'll say to you is, when I were at British Gas, we used to do this every day. So we, we used to size radiators. I used to go to the job that I was doing for three years. I did between four and six heat losses a day. And we would go around and we'd size boilers and we'd size radiators and we'd do all that. And it was really good, it would in, in computer and you couldn't do it wrong. Since leaving British Gas, it's obviously more difficult because then you've got to manually do it and work it out <clears throat> so and that doesn't always happen so in today's video i'm going to try and show you an easy way on how to do it so yeah without further ado let's go over to michael thanks alan today's video with ngcfe is um, a follow-on from a recent video we've done we did a video on the you know the new Partel regulations that will come in the 15th of June and some of the questions that we've got back are around radiator sizing you know is it going to be as big an issue as what we, 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 we think now it's not the, the short answer is because we've got a, a, a history over the last 20 years of engineers oversizing radiators based on how they look aesthetically we'll probably find and we will find that a lot of the radiators in the property already will already be adequate for 55 degree flow temperatures. So we wanted to go through an example and the examples worked out quite well. We didn't pick this radiator for the, you know, with knowing what it was going to end out at. We just selected the radiator that we, we commonly see in rooms um, and it just worked out perfectly. So um, the first thing we need to know is what is the heat loss of the room? So we've got a standard room that's been designed to an inside internal temperature of 20 degrees and the heat loss has worked out at 0.5 kilowatts or 500 watts. Now the radiator that's in the room is a 1200 by 6 single K1 or type 21 radiator. Now the, the current boiler is a Baxi Solo. It's got a DT, a temperature between flow and return of 10 degrees. Its flow temperature is set at 75 degrees. Its return temperature, because of the DT of 10, is coming back at 65 degrees. If we look at the number that's bang in the middle of the flow and return, we end up with 70 degrees. The difference between the, 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 the number in the middle of 75 and 65 is 70. So that's our mean water temperature. That's the temperature of the water that is likely to be in our radiators as an average. So if we've got a mean water temperature of 70 degrees and we've got a room temperature of 20 degrees, then that means we've got a DT of 50 degrees. Now that, it's a different type of DT, it's a room DT. So it's the difference of the mean water temperature of your radiator, 70 degrees, and the room temperature that we're targeting, 20 degrees. So 70 minus 20 gives us 50 degrees. Now you'll see from, the, it's a QDOX radiator, so it's what Screwfix provide. And you'll see that I've got the, 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 um, the output chart for QDOX radiators in my hand. And this is the one that sized the DT50. So this is what we've said, flow temperature of 70, room temperature of 20. So therefore the DT is 50. Now we can see that we've got a catalog DT of 50. And at DT50, uh, um, a 1200B, um, 600 type 11 sorry not type 21 type 11 radiator will be 1231 watts so that's 1231 watts of heat that that radiator 
is going to give out into the room every second that it's in operation um, at with this boiler a, a, a flow of 75 return of 65 so as we say this is the existing boiler it's an old-fashioned Baxi solo it's non-condensing it's just you know it, it's a non-condensing boiler with a DT of 10 between flow and return so the new boiler that we're going to propose is a Wiesman 200 and we're going to propose this boiler because we can quite easily achieve um, a DT of 20 which is the target DT for a condensing boiler so we've got a Wiesman 200 with a target DT of 20 degrees so that means that we're going to set the flow temperature to 55 which is what we're going to be asked to do as of June um, June the 15th on new systems and because we've got a DT of 20 the return temperature is going to come back at 35 degrees so it's going to come back at 35 the difference between 55 and 35 is 45 well the number in the middle is 45 degrees so that means that our that our dt between the room so the mean water to mean mean water to air temperature is going to be 25 degrees because we've got 45 which is the number in the middle of the flow and return minus the room temperature which is 20. so that means that we've got a mean water to air temperature of 25 degrees not 50 like we had with the backseat but now we've got a, um, a, a mean water to air temperature of 25 degrees. Now, there isn't a catalogue that's going to give us this, this, the output of DT25. So therefore, what we need to do is, is use a conversion factor. Now, they do, the, the QDOCs do provide an additional chart for mean water to air temperature of 30 degrees. However, that's not what we've got. So a mean water to air temperature of 30 degrees would be a boiler that's got a mean water temperature of um, 50 degrees. So 30 degrees. So you've got a room of 20 and a, um, a mean water temperature in your radiators of 50. That would give you a mean water to air temperature of 30 degrees. In which case, you could just use this chart from QDOX, which has DT30 put on it. But ours is DT25, so we need to calculate this ourselves. So because we already have the data for a chart of DT50, we can take our new mean water to air temperature, which is 25. We can divide that by the catalogue data, which is 50, which gives us 0.5. We can then take the 0.5 and multiply it by the power of 1.3. That gives us our conversion factor, which in this case is 0.406. Our conversion factor is what we're going to divide the heat loss of the room by to achieve what we want, what, to, to tell us what, what size radiator we need to pick from the original catalog that will give us our heat loss. So our heat loss for the room is 500 watts or 0.5 kilowatts. So we take off 500 watts and we divide it by the conversion factor, which is 0.406. And that gives us as a coincidence, 1,231.5 watts. Now that is only 0.5 watts greater than the radiator that we already had in was, was given out. So therefore, you know, your customer would, would never notice half a watt of, of energy, heat energy in the room. So this radiator, this 1200B6 single type, type 11 K1, that is sufficient you don't have to do anything with that radiator at the reduced flow temperature of 55 degrees that radiator is going to although it's going to the radiator is designed to give you 1231 watts at dt50 at dt25 it's still going to give us our 500 watts that we need so that's how we calculate it so just to add some perspective i've recently done a heat loss calculation on my property in preparation for moving across to a heat pump and there was only one radiator in my property that I needed to, to change. Um, and so ultimately what this video is about is just getting across the message that but because we've been oversizing radiators for, for a number of years, when we come to calculate you know, what we need at the reduced flow temperature, we're actually not going to be far away. We're going to be pretty much in the ballpark. I mean, in this case, we, it was you know, dec not decimal perfect, but it was pretty much bang on what, what we had to start with. Um, but the point being, it's not, it's not going to be the case where we have to upsize every single radiator. Um, 
and more to the point, this is for a boiler with a DT of 20. A heat pump has a DT of five, so a 55 degree flow, your return's gonna be 50 degrees, so your mean water temperature is gonna be 52.5. So you're gonna need, you're not even, this, this radiator would even be oversized for a heat pump. This is designed for a boiler, a 55 degree flow. So for a heat pump, it's, called, it's gonna be oversized. So what you could do then is reduce the flow temperature of your heat pump and boost your efficiency. So again, this calculation, it's not difficult to carry out. You should be able to do it really easily on site. Um, all you need is the catalog data for the radiator that is in currently, and you can design from that. If you haven't got that information to hand, you can either contact the manufacturer, but there's not gonna be a massive amount of difference between different manufacturers. If you're selecting a similar size radiator, um, and, and use an engineer's judgment, you're not gonna be a million miles away. So yeah, let's not panic about it. Most radiators will probably be okay, but however we do, and it is important to calculate the conversion factor when you've not got a catalog that's gonna give you that information for you to use and just read off. So yeah, I hope that was useful. I hope you guys can take this information away and put it into good use um, when you're out looking at radiators and when you're looking if you are looking at reducing flow temperatures to 55 degrees it's best practice be better efficiency from your boiler um, remember that what we're, we're trying to do really is trying to keep that return temperature as far below 54 degrees as is possible and um, to maximize the condensing efficiency of the boiler thanks guys i'll pass you back to alan thanks for your time thank you very much for that michael um just to recap on that if what, what we're trying to achieve, what, we, what we're doing here, we're seeing if the radiators that we've got will work on a low temperature system. And over the years, what we've found is often radiators are oversized. So when a plumber comes in, it'll look, oh yeah, this one will fit in between this window and they won't actually do a heat loss. Sometimes they do. Most of the time, from my experience, they don't. So it's difficult to know, to say to everybody, yeah, your radiators will work or no, they won't. But what you can do, if you do, a, if you do the heat loss to start with of the room, find out how many, how many watts that room needs to keep it warm. And then what you're doing then is, you go into your chart and you're measuring your, radiator, your existing radiator, you're looking at your existing radiator and you're seeing what that will produce at what the chart says. I've got a little app on here and this is just called it's just called Radiator and this might be something that you can download I've got no affiliations with this app but you might, be to, uh, you might want to download this and then you can play with this and you can have a little practice so if we have a look on here now we've just got on if we imagine we've sized the radiator and it's saying that we've got a thousand watts and on this particular one on here it's showing a flow temperature of 80 degrees and a return temperature of 60 degrees and then below you can work out your design temperatures 55 flow 45 return and then your room temperature as well and you can alter these settings so let's say you wanted it to be um, 35 return. So on there you've got your flow that's 55 and your return that's 35. And it'll show you on there what size radiators or if the radiators that you've got at the moment, if they're the right size. So as I say, you can, you can just have a little play with that. And, Please put some comments below. Go and have a play with that. Put some comments below. Let me know your radiators. Can you turn your existing system down? So you might be able to just um, go to the front of your boiler, turn your uh, turn the control down to 55. And if you can turn it down to 55 and you've got a condensing boiler, then obviously your system's going to be more efficient. So it's a, it's a good idea to to do that anyway <laughs> i hope this has been of some use um put some comments below let me know thank you